Well, we're heading up to Heber City. Oh, fun. Home of the Heber Creeper. Yes. And also home of the Dairy Keen Restaurant, uh, which is fun. It's a fun place. Steve's been working up there forever. It's a railroad themed thing, and they hire Steve to build them railroad thing, <laughs> theme thing stuff, <laughs> deal thing. Yes, whimsical. Whimsical, very whimsical. But we're stopping in route over at the dentist's office because I've got this small toothache and I'm just kind of concerned. So we're going to get that looked at and then we're going to celebrate whatever comes up uh, by continuing on to Heber and checking out the Dairy Keen. So check this out. Well, Steve has uh, given up work on the Bodie Creek part of his railroad for a while because <laughs> he's working on this. Isn't this cool? That's really neat. He's been building decorations for the Dairy Keen restaurant in Heber, and they contracted with him to build three locomotives and three cabooses, uh, which are going to be sort of booth separators here at the Dairy Keen restaurant. I love Heber City. This is the home of the Heber Valley Railroad. Yeah, the, it used to be the Heber Creeper. <laughs> as far as we're concerned, it still is. <laughs> But we love to go up here and ride the train. I do. I love it. It's so beautiful. It's just a rare, very, very relaxing ride. Looks almost exactly like Switzerland. Anyway, this is the Dairy Keen restaurant. It's been up here forever. Oh, really? Yeah, it's just a fixture in Heber City. It started off as a Dairy Queen, and then they changed it to a Dairy Keen and put in a railroad theme and uh, hired Steve to start building little locomotives and decorations. So they do a lot of their own decorations here, but for some of the miniature work, then they hire Steve. <laughs> but check this out, isn't that fun? A drive-in window that's tracks. It's tracks. <laughs> and cross bucks and railroad signage and all sorts of things. And it has this overhead uh, G-scale railroad that runs around up by the roof. They build it, but then they hired Steve to build structures for it and so on. But it really turned out neat, and it just it runs all the time. And they've rigged up a system where they can have two trains running at the same time on the same track. It just uses a little time delay circuit to keep them from running into each other. I love the backdrop. It looks just like the Heber Valley. It turned out super cool. And Steve's structures turned out quite nice, too. They sure did. Look at that. Wow. Lots of people will do large scale in an overhead railroad like this because it's so hard to fit it in down at uh, four feet off the floor. But just about anybody can fit it in if you just raise it up to above the windows and doors. Then it goes right in there, even in a large scale. As we know, I'm a big advocate for shelf-style railroads because you can fit them into tight spaces, and if you don't have a place to put in some kind of a big layout, everybody can fit a shelf layout, even a large-scale railroad like this, if you just raise it up above the windows and doors. Looks like the train is going across the dam at Deer Creek. Yeah, if you know the local areas, they're kind of calling that out here with the names of the places. That's really fun. The Harry Potter exhibit is really fascinating. Isn't that neat? Steve built this for them a few years ago, and you drop a quarter in, and the lights come on, and the trains go. It's really fun. It's got that British quality to it. Definitely feels like a scene from Harry Potter. Kids all love Harry Potter. They sure do. Well, we do too. Oh, yes. <laughs> Here's your favorite spot. Nine and three quarters. <laughs> yes, that was such a fun idea. The yes. nine and three quarters platform. That's just so clever. And Steve was able to find a British locomotive to put together the train with. Whole thing just turned out really, really neat. I guess you could say it's magical. Quite literally. <laughs> <laughs> right down to the magic wand. 
I've never really figured out why so many people only model railroads from their own backyard, but that's the tendency. Right. Yeah, people just want to model what they know, I guess. But there's so much else in the world besides the stuff in your own backyard. And this is just really fun to see modeling of a British railway. And if it requires building a magical castle to do it, so be it. <laughs> So this is what Steve is creating for the restaurant, the new stuff. He's building it up here in his train room. Because there's three different trains, he's making molds of a lot of the parts that he needs a lot of, the locomotive driver and the truck side frames and so on. And that just saves him a lot of time. He only had to build one driver and one side frame and then make molds. But for the rest of the locomotive, he's just building it entirely from scratch. Three pilots, three frames, three cabs, three complete bodies for the three cabooses, and so on. But wherever he can, he's making molds. It just saves a lot of time and work. And it turns out really nice. It's amazing how everything just fits together with precision. I love the shape of these things. He's kind of lengthened the cab, made it taller and shorter and so on. I guess you could say it's cute. It's whimsical. It's whimsical. <laughs> <laughs> it isn't meant to be a literal locomotive. It's just meant to be an enormous amount of fun. The boiler's just made out of PVC plumbing parts and Steve was offended at the sheer cost of the things. <laughs> He's used to doing this stuff practically for nothing by scratch building it and having to drop a hundred dollars on plumbing parts was just offensive. I love the way these little adapters turned out that connect the domes to the boilers. Look how precision those that are. That perfect fit. And uh, he made castings for that and they're just absolutely amazing. The sand dome and the steam dome. This notch at the back of the caboose is where the glass fits in for the booth dividers. That should look right really neat. Here, and then I milled these slots here and then set them all on the jig and soldered them up. Wow. It's sort of hard to imagine that somebody's put in this much work into decorations for a restaurant, but that's Steve. Yes. He's always doing things way, way over the top. So we traveled up to Heber uh, to meet Al and Steve while they were dropping some parts off here. A, to see how cool this is. B, to have some lunch and C, to ride the train. Yes. And pretty soon Steve will get back to working on his own railroad. And we're really looking forward to seeing how the new area here turns out. And yes, that will be a show and we'll show you guys as soon as we have something to show you. And it shouldn't take that long. He's always working on something. That's right. And it always turns out absolutely amazing. Well, so that's the Dairy King. Isn't that fun? Isn't that the funnest place? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm, I'm sort of numb here because when we stopped at the dentist, for, and he said I had to have an emergency root canal. So they did an emergency root canal. And we said, well, we're planning to go to Heber anyway. Uh, we're not... <laughs> We don't, we don't give up for nothing. No, not even a pacemaker. Not even when, we've, when I had to have the pacemaker, the show that the show has to go on. The, the show has to go on, so I'm, I'm numb, but uh, <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. And in fact, we're going to go ride the train now because it's Heber, yes. and the train leaves in 15 minutes. So we're heading over to the Heber Creeper, and next week's show, we'll be riding the Heber Creeper. So that should be an enormous amount of fun. Uh, unless the Novocaine wears off. <laughs> so let's hope not, because it's right now it's numb and it doesn't hurt at all. Well, if you haven't been over to this channel, do pop on over to the channel. And if, if you're not a subscriber, you want to subscribe. And uh, the, the new blue button will be popping in. It will help you to subscribe. Zoink, zoink right here. The blue button says subscribe makes you a subscriber. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring, and we will see you here again next week with the Hebrew Creeper. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.